Hey everyone, it's Crew Con Keith here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're looking at the top 10 Amiga games. Okay, so um, this is part 2 of a video that I did um, a while back. Uh, it's actually the top 20 Amiga games. So uh, check out the link in the description, go back and watch that. Lots of great games. But today we're looking at the absolute top 10 Amiga games. In my opinion, of course, you may not agree, you may be completely bewildered by, by some of them, but as far as I'm concerned, these are the top 10, so uh, let's get stuck in. Okay, so starting things off at number 10, we have Sensible Soccer. I'd say almost every person of my generation that was into video games has played Sensible Soccer. Probably. If you haven't, go play it right now. I was never that much into sports games when I was younger, mainly because they were mostly shite, but Sensi, as we called it so lovingly, it was the exception. I remember playing the first ever FIFA game on PC CD-ROM when it had the stars under the player sprites and the commentary. You know, that was pretty amazing, but Sensible Soccer was a good few years before that. It was the type of game that anyone could get into and enjoy. The old bass player from Cruacon, John Clossy, would travel to my house from the deep, dark Irish countryside in the early 1990s and we would have tournaments on this, playing into the small hours of the night. We had a technique to punt the ball up the middle, then score using the, the way over the top after touch that was in the game. We called it the cliché. Alright, so Sensible Soccer was released in 1992 on Amiga, Atari ST and PC and later on loads of other formats. The SNES version is pretty good. There was a version released in 2006, believe it or not, for, PS, uh, for PC and the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox, uh, which wasn't that bad actually. It was produced with, by, uh, with John Hare. He worked on the original game, so I had a bit of uh, insider knowledge, I guess. The footage that you're looking at is actually from Sensible World of Soccer, uh, because I don't own the original Sensible Soccer. At number 9, we have Reach for the Skies. This was one of the first flight sims I ever played. Not the first though, that comes later, but definitely one that got me into the genre in a really, really big way. Reach for the Skies is a World War II flight simulator based around the Battle of Britain. You pilot up to 8 planes and can fight on either side. One really, really cool feature allowed you to take on controller duties, where you were responsible for construction of new planes and their deployment. Graphically, it was pretty good for the time. It looks shit now, as you would expect, but back then this was really, really cutting edge stuff. Released in 1993 by Virgin Games, Reach for the Skies remains one of the best flight sim experiences I've had to date. At number 8, Alien Breed 2. This is one of those games that is uniquely Amiga. Everything about this screams Amiga and early 90s. From the almost pastel looking colours to the distinct sound and music of Alistair Brimble, this is Amiga gaming at its best. Released by Team 17 in 1993, it's the follow up to the first Alien Breed game released in 91. You choose from four characters, you work your way through level after level of alien infested floors seeking the exit. It's a top down shooter where you blast everything in sight. When you trigger the exit, you have a countdown timer and need to run to the exit before it expires and the floor blows up. The sheer panic that sets in when you hear the destruction sequence initiated is unreal. It can get shockingly difficult in later levels, but I remember completing the game one rainy day in Dublin in the early 90s. I received no recognition from anyone. My mother probably shouted at me to clean my bloody room or to take my suicidal tendencies t-shirt off. I'll tell you that story some other day. And at number 7, Lemmings. Lemmings is one of those games that needs no introduction. Before I got my Amiga in 1992, I'd play it at friends' houses or I'd read about it in magazines I bought at the time. A friend of mine gave me a copy, a single white 3.5 inch floppy disk before I got my Amiga for Christmas and I can still remember staring longingly at it waiting for the day I could actually play it. The nostalgia oozing from this game is off the charts. I love everything about it. From the tiny animated sprites to the fun music, it's an absolute classic. Lemmings was created by DMA Design, which later became Rockstar North, believe it or not. 
I remember reading an interview with him in uh, Amiga Format magazine, I think, uh, reading an interview with DMA, and they, they said in the interview the name stands for doesn't mean anything. I've never been able to find that reference on the internet. Maybe they're embarrassed by it? No idea, but now you know. Uh, the game itself was designed by Mike Daly, who wanted to create an animated sprite in as few pixels as possible. He created the sprite and some levels in deluxe paint on the Amiga. The gameplay itself is very easy to pick up, but takes a, a lot of time to master. You guide a set number of lemmings from their entry point to their exit point, assigning different skills and tasks to them along the way to help them on their path. Why am I even explaining it? It's Everyone knows lemmings. At number 6, Team Park. Dad, I'm really bored. Bored? Please don't be afraid. I'm the advisor, and I'm here to take you to a magical land. You first, lad. Friends can come too. And even grown-ups. Roll up! Roll up! For the greatest show on Earth! It's Syndicate without the guns! Well, nah, it's not really, but Team Park does have some similarities. Both developed by Bullfrog, both involved moving around the world, conquering each country as you go, while you're up against rivals doing the same. Uh, anyway, Team Park is a management sim. You build a Team Park from the ground up, make it profitable, then sell up and open a new Team Park in a more lucrative area. I have to admit, I put hours and hours into this game, but never really played it properly. I would make my theme park amazing, full of rides and attractions. I'd spend ages making the roller coaster and the water slide. The thoughts of selling my creation and starting again from scratch never really sat well with me. The engine working in the background was brilliant. The happier you kept the people, the higher the prices you could charge. You keep them happy by having exciting rides and good attractions. You can also make money in shops in devious ways. Put extra salt on the chips to make them buy more cola. Put extra sugar in the cola to make them go on more rides. A true simulation of the corporate world, if you ask me. Team Park has spawned many clones and sequels, but nothing can beat the fun I had with this back in the day. Number 5, Knights of the Sky. This is the first flight sim I ever seen being played and to this day I can still remember the impact the graphics had on me. I'd never seen 3D polygon graphics in the flesh and I was completely blown away. I had my Amiga a few months before I got this but I was mainly playing platform games and action games. A friend of mine had this running and I swear to me at that time it was like watching a movie. I totally understand that today that probably sounds ridiculous but back then these graphics were groundbreaking. I got the game for myself soon after, and that was the start of my lifelong love of flight sims. Knights of the Sky was released on the Amiga in 1991 by Micro Microprose? Microprose? I can never say that right. And was very well received at the time. It was a realistic simulation of World War I military aviation. I had no other game to compare it to, but knew when I was playing it that I was experiencing something really special. I felt like I was in that sop with camel, struggling to keep it from stalling while I aimed my machine guns at the enemy. Around early 94, the Amiga community became obsessed with having a multiplayer first person shooter similar to Doom on the system. Little did they know that owners of Knights of the Sky had been playing multiplayer with null modem cables for a few years previous. Keep the plane on the ground and go after your enemy that way and it felt like you were playing Doom. Didn't it? <laughs> At number 4 we've got the Chaos Engine. Victorian aesthetics mixed with futuristic technology, I give you the Chaos Engine. Released in 1993 by the Bitmap Brothers, the Chaos Engine was a top-down shooter where you explored mazes, shot mutants, all while searching for the exit to the level. 
The goal was to reach the steam-driven chaos engine itself that had imprisoned its inventor and was creating all these lovely mutant creatures. It was very similar to Gauntlet, but so much better. I remember some reviews referring to, as, referring to it as Gauntlet for the 90s. Uh, there were two characters, you controlled one and the CPU controlled the other. Even better if you had a friend and a second joystick. The look of the game is absolutely stunning and again has that Amiga feel about it. Although it was released on other platforms as well. Interestingly, the Preacher character was called the Scientist on the SNES version. Religion is a no-no in Japan, I guess. Another thing to mention is the music. Absolutely legendary. Have a listen to this. Coming in at number 3, we have Frontier Elite 2. So, I'd never played Elite at the time I was playing Frontier. I was vaguely aware that there was a game that came before it, but apart from that, I was blissfully ignorant. I never even noticed that there was a 2 in the name. I thought it was just some fancy design on the box. Just want to get that out of the way, as I know a lot of people prefer the original over this. So, Frontier was developed by the legendary David Brabham, who's known today for the development of the Raspberry Pi microcomputer. Frontier is an open-ended space trading sim and combat, combat simulator. There was no real plot to the game. You explore space, you trade legally or illegally, you fight pirates, you can be a pirate. Really, you could do so much in the game that it was mind-boggling, uh, especially for young little me at the time. And that's why I got sucked into it so much and have such fond memories of it. The game contained an entire universe to explore. A universe that fit onto one three and a half inch floppy disk. It was an absolute joy to take off from a planet trade around the star, star system that you start in, eventually earning enough money to buy a ship with a hyperdrive, then the game really, really opened up. I love everything about this game back in the day and would encourage you to take a look. Even the graphics back then were amazing. Yes, they look dodgy today, but not everything's about graphics. That's why we still read books, people. Number 2, Project X. This simple little shooter from Team 17 absolutely blew my mind when I got it for my Amiga in Christmas, at Christmas 1993. I bought the game on a whim weeks before Christmas. It was a side-scrolling shooter and I liked the box art. Enough said. Turns out I bought the second edition which was a little easier than the original release so that's what I'm talking about here and that's what you're seeing in the, the footage. They say easier but still to this bloody day I've never actually beaten the game. Project X has that unique Amiga look that I keep talking about and also perfect sound and music by that man Alistair Brimble. The guys in Team 17 really could do no wrong on the Amiga. There's not much else to say, I was a huge fan of these games back then and this was simply perfect for me. The still image that came on when the level was loading was mesmerising. The graphics, absolutely superb and this game is so good and I still play it to this day. Select now for speed up. So, my number one all-time best Amiga game ever, according to me, is The Settlers. So, yeah, my number one Amiga game of all time is The Settlers by German company Blue Byte. I love this game so much and I've put months of gameplay into it during the early 90s. I can still remember seeing it for sale in the game video game shop close to my home in Dublin. I picked up the box and immediately fell in love with everything about it. One sneaky thing they put in the description on the back was that it featured, it featured 64 on-screen characters, but they had a decimal and some zeros after, so I was like, is there 64,000 on-screen characters? Take a look.
Why did he put those zeros? Anyway, it didn't matter. The game was amazing. At its core, The Settlers is a mix of god game and strategy game. You start with a castle, then lay roots around your kingdom and build different buildings that will help grow your kingdom. A farm to grow wheat, a mill to make flour from the wheat, then a bakery to make bread. And that bread will go on to feed your miners and so on. When the farmer gathers his crops, he leaves them at the flagpole outside the farm. A settler then takes this to the mill and so on and so on and so on. That's how it played out. There was also a military aspect to it. You would grow a small army to fight your opponents and take their land. The game was very, very slow paced and that added a lot to the experience. I can remember, I can remember issuing loads of commands. Lots of buildings to be built, etc. that I knew would take a long, long time to unfold. I'd then leave the game running, I'd go make some tea, watch something on TV, then come back to the game to find most of what I wanted was complete, but also maybe I'd been attacked and lost some land, which wasn't a good thing. There have been many sequels, but nothing quite like the original. The Settlers 2 was good, I played that on PC, but pretty much after that I lost interest in the series, and I know they, they look amazing on PC, amazing graphics, etc, etc. Uh, anyway, I have to mention the music. I absolutely loved it. It was pretty much the same tune over and over, but when I hear that today, I still get goosebumps. Finally, have to mention the intro. A small animated affair, but absolutely delightful. In fact, I'll put the entire intro at the end of this video. So there you go. Number one Amiga game ever is The Settlers. So there you go, that's my top 10 Amiga games of all time. My Amiga games, yours may be completely different. Uh, this is my all-time favourite, number one, The Settlers. I got so much fun out of this game. Uh, as I said in the, the video, I'm going to play the full intro that came with it uh, after this. So um, stick around and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like that video and if you like what I do on the channel, please leave a like and please subscribe because it helps very much. Thank you.